In this video, we're going to focus on converting grams to molecules and molecules to grams. So let's start with this example. How many molecules of CO2, carbon dioxide, can be found in 55.1 grams of CO2? So what you need to do is start with grams, convert it to moles using the molar mass, and then convert moles to molecules using Avogadro's number. So that's the blueprint of what we're going to follow today. So let's start by finding the molar mass of CO2. So we have one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. Carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01 and oxygen is 16. So that's going to be 12.01 plus 2 times 16, which is 32. So that's 44.01 grams per mole. So what this means is that one mole of CO2 has a mass of 44.01 grams. So we're going to use that to convert grams to moles in the first step. So let's start with 55.1 grams of CO2. And now this 44.01 grams of CO2 for every mole of carbon dioxide. Now we want to set it up in such a way that the unit grams of CO2 cancels. Now let's convert moles to molecules. One mole of CO2 is equal to Avogadro's number, 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Ran out of space of CO2. So now we just got to do the math. It's 55.1 divided by 44.01 multiplied by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. So the answer is 7.54 times 10 to the 23 molecules of carbon dioxide. Number two, how many molecules of SO3 can be found in 20.3 grams of SO3? So let's follow the same procedure. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this. So first, let's find the molar mass of SO3. So we have one sulfur atom and three oxygen atoms. Sulfur is about 32.07 in atomic mass and oxygen is 16. Now 3 times 16 that's 48. 32 plus 48 is 80. So this is going to be 80.07. So now we have the conversion factor. One mole of SO3 has a mass of 80.07 grams of SO3. And the second conversion factor has to do with moles and Avogadro's number. One mole of SO3 is equivalent to 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And since SO3 is a molecule, this is going to represent molecules of SO3. So these are the two conversion factors that we need in order to go from grams to molecules. So now let's start with 20.3 grams of SO3 and let's convert it to moles. So let's put 80.07 grams on the bottom so that these units will cancel. And so we need to put one mole of SO3, the other side of this conversion factor, on top. In the next fraction, we're going to put this same unit on the bottom. And that equates to 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules of SO3. So it's 20.3 divided by 80.07, which is about 0.25, and then times 6.022 times 10 to the 23. 
So you should get 1.53, if you round it, times 10 to the 23 molecules of sulfur trioxide. And so that's the solution. Number three, how many grams are present in 4.5 times 10 to the 24 molecules of dinitrogen trioxide? So this problem is basically the reverse of the problems we've been dealing with. So now we're given the number of molecules and we need to convert it to the mass in grams. So how should we begin? Well, the first thing we need is we need the molar mass. Dinitrogen trioxide is N2O3. Two is associated with the word di, three is for tri. So we have two nitrogen atoms and three oxygen atoms. The atomic mass of N is 14.01, and for O it's 16. So this is going to be 28.02 plus 48, which gives us a total of 76.02 grams per mole. So now that we have the molar mass, we can convert what we need to convert. So let's start with the number of molecules that we're given. 4.5 times 10 to the 24 molecules of N2O3. Now let's convert that to moles using Avogadro's number. So this is going to be one mole of N2O3. Now, once we have the number of moles, we could find the mass using the molar mass. So one mole of N2O3 has a mass of 76.02 grams. So it's 4.5 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. That's about 7.47 and then multiply that result by 76.02. So the final answer is 568.1 grams of dinitrogen trioxide. So that's how you can convert molecules into mass in grams. Number four what is the mass in grams of a sample of 7.3 times 10 to the 23 molecules of iodine heptafluoride? So based on the last example, you should be able to do this one. So feel free to try it if you want to. So let's start with the formula iodine heptafluoride. Hepta is associated with 7, so we're going to have 7 fluorine atoms in this molecule. So now let's calculate the molar mass. The atomic mass of iodine is 126.9, and the atomic mass of fluorine is 19. 7 times 19, that's 133. And if you add 126.9 to that, this will give you a, a value of 259.9. So one mole of IF7 has a mass of 259.9 grams. So now let's finish the rest of the problem. So let's start with what we're given, 7.3 times 10 to the 23 molecules. And let's convert it to moles. So one mole of IF7 is equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23 molecules of IF7. Now let's convert that value to grams. So one mole of IF7 has a mass of 259.9 grams. So let's divide 7.3 times 10 to the 23 by 6.022 times 10 to the 23. 
you should get 1.21 and then multiply that by 259.9. So the mass in grams is 315.06 grams of iodine heptafluoride. And so this is the answer.